I recently read Mini Habits by Stephen Guise. When trying to build an exercise habit, or write a book, or develop a new skill, most people assume they need to take massive action. Work out for 60 minutes in the morning, write 5,000 words in the afternoon, and practice two hours at night. But massive action has a massive problem. It requires motivation. And if action requires motivation, you can always find an excuse not to do it. I have a headache. I'm too tired right now. Something came up. I'll do it tomorrow. You and I are always going to have days when we're feeling down, didn't sleep well, feel sick, or just in a bad mood. On those days, we'll find an excuse to avoid working out, writing, or practicing. But what if we made the requirement for a desired behavior so small that there was no valid excuse to skip it? This is what author Stephen Geist asked himself after a decade of failing to develop an exercise habit. For a decade, Geist tried to execute a 30-minute exercise routine, but found that he either didn't have enough time or energy to do it. So Geist thought, what's the opposite of this 30-minute routine? Well, one push-up came to mind. And Geist literally laughed out loud at the thought of defining a successful workout as completing one push-up. But every time he switched back to his 30-minute routine, he failed. So he got down and completed one push-up. Guys now refers to that one push-up as the golden push-up. Because that one measly push-up was the turning point in his life, the gateway to positive transformation. To understand why, you must understand the three hidden powers of a mini habit. Mini habit power number one, post-movement motivation. When you make a tiny movement, you suddenly find the motivation to make another and another, and another. After guys got down to do one push-up, he found that he was willing to do two, then three, then four. In fact, he found it hard to stop himself before his muscles started to ache. Why? Well, one part ego and one part physics. Since one push-up is stupid small, as Steven says, because he knew one push-up was well within his abilities, his inner voice challenged his ego by effectively saying, are you afraid of one push-up? Are you really that lazy? It was actually easier for guys to do the one push-up than walk around the rest of the day with the knowledge that he was defeated by one measly push-up. Once guys got down on the ground and did that one push-up, he was in motion, and an object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by another force, which in physics is Newton's first law of motion. Start a micro-action, then get out of the way and let physics take over. Guys has created his own equation to explain this phenomenon. One small step plus desired behavior equals high probability of further steps. Mini habit power number two, small actions strengthen self-belief, which generates a willingness to change. In 2009, researchers at Northwestern University recruited a group of people with extreme spider phobias to their lab to see if they could help them overcome their fear of spiders. First, the researchers got their participants to talk about spiders. Then the researchers had the participants look at a photo of a tarantula. Then the researchers convinced the participants to stand 10 feet away from a tarantula that sat in a glass enclosure. Eventually, the researchers got the participants to touch the glass wall of the enclosure. Then they got them to use a paintbrush to touch the tarantula. After just two hours of taking these micro steps, participants who were once so afraid of spiders that they refused to walk on grass for fear of encountering a spider were happily holding a furry tarantula in their bare hands. Small actions open the door to bigger changes because small actions reduce fear and strengthen one's belief in oneself. Mini habit power number three, less effort, same result. Building a habit is like riding a bike up a hill. It takes work to get up the hill, but once you reach the top, you can use gravity to roll down the hill effortlessly. It takes work to build a habit which can range from 18 to 254 days of effort, depending on the habit and the person. But once ingrained, it becomes automatic and effortless. In fact, it becomes hard not to execute the habit. I found this to be true for something that was initially painful and is still relatively uncomfortable, cold showers. Several years ago, I learned about Wim Hof and the power of cold showers. So I committed to ending every shower with a blast of cold water on my body. At first, I needed to psych myself out, but now, at the end of my shower, I turn the handle to cold so instinctually and automatically that I often don't notice myself doing it until I'm hit with the cold water. 
What's more surprising is that if for some reason I was distracted and stepped out of the shower without giving myself a blast of cold water, I feel an urge to get back in the shower and do a mini shower so that I end with a cold blast of water. We all have behaviors that we routinely execute that make us feel weird when we don't do them. Try not brushing your teeth in the morning, or try not having a shower in the morning, or try not saying your usual greeting when you answer the phone. When you don't execute these familiar behaviors, your brain effectively says, wait, why aren't you doing that? Our brains love consistency, and they get pissed off when a familiar action doesn't follow a particular cue. But what most people don't realize is that this feeling, this urge to execute a habit, comes from consistency, not quantity. I just needed to do five seconds of cold water at the end of every shower for a few weeks to train my brain to want cold water at the end of a shower. If I had forced myself to do 50 seconds of cold water every time I showered, it would have taken the same amount of time to develop that desire to hit myself with cold water, but it also would have made me far less likely to develop that habit because 50 seconds of cold water is very hard. When you scale back a habit, it's like you're retrofitting your bike with a mini motor that allows you to go the same speed as someone pedaling up the hill, but you're not breaking a sweat. The three mini habit powers, post-movement motivation, increased belief in oneself, and less effort required to ingrain a habit, are what allow a mini habit to produce big results. But you'll fail to see big results if you don't abide by these two mini habit rules. Mini habit rule number one, make it stupid small. Set your minimum requirement lower than the lowest possible motivation, so even on your worst days, you'll find the time and energy to do it. Remember, the goal is to have no excuse not to do it. If you want to build a habit of journaling before bed every night, make the requirement so small that even if you've worked 16 hours in the office and dealt with a screaming baby in the evening and didn't sleep the night before, you can still get yourself to do it. I've used the power of mini habits to start journaling myself every night when I get into bed. I ideally wanted to write three pages of notes every night, but I knew there'd be days where I'd make excuses not to do it. So I scaled back my minimum requirement until it felt stupid small. I set my sights on writing one word of reflection every night. If I stop at one word, I'm tempted to get angry at myself. But then I remember mini habit rule number two, be happy with the minimum. If I intend to do the minimum, but then get angry at myself for only doing the minimum, there's a part of my brain that knows that I'm trying to manipulate myself and it won't fall for the trick, and it will resist building the habit. But if I'm genuinely satisfied after writing one word in my journal and make more words an option, not an obligation, I'm more likely to stick with my habit and I'm more likely to produce more words. By giving myself the choice to write more, I activate a sense of autonomy, which is a powerful intrinsic motivator. On some nights, when I have more energy than usual, I'll fly past the one word requirement and write three pages of notes. When I look back on my journal entries and add up the bad days when I only wrote one word with the good days when I went above and beyond, it adds up to far more than I would have written if I had set my initial goal to write three pages every night. Because if I'm honest with myself, I would have never stuck with that habit. Whenever I doubt a new mini habit, whether that's doing one push-up, writing one word, or reading one sentence, I remember Guy's equation. One small step plus desired behavior equals high probability of further steps. That was the core message that I gathered from Mini Habits by Stephen Guise. I initially read this book six years ago when it first came out, and I've read it multiple times since. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching, and have yourself a productive week.